Okay, so I wanted to jump back on because the soup is ready, okay? The stew. The salmon stew is ready, and look at the texture of it. You see, it's beautiful, and it sticks to the spoon, and that was because, remember I told you I put arrowroot in it, not cornstarch to thicken it, but arrowroot, and it's delicious, and along with the stew, I'm having some kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. It's a fermented drink. It's uh, it's a wonderful probiotic for your stomach. My daughter told me, she said, Mom, since I've been drinking kombucha, I, I drink about two ounces at night, not every night. Uh, my stomach doesn't bother me anymore. And I'm like, I didn't know you had stomach trouble. She said, yeah, but drinking the kombucha. So it's a natural po probiotic. Some people make their own. I get mine the Kavita brand. I was buying another brand, but I'm bu buying that brand now. So let me tell you one more time what is in this stew. Okay, so I started by sauteing two stalks of celery. I, I put these all in the food processor because I wanted them ground up small. I didn't want them chopped. I wanted it to be this consistency. And so I put two stalks of celery, three big cloves of garlic. These were big cloves of garlic, not the giant garlic. I put... um. Okay, a whole onion, I put, um, yeah, that was it, and some dill weed and salt and pepper, and then, of course, I sauteed all of that onion and, and uh, garlic and uh, celery in butter, Kerrygold butter, which is grass-fed butter, Irish butter, and then I put that, I did it in an aluminum pan, not my black cast iron skillet, because I didn't want it to brown. I wanted the soup to be, you know, a pretty white. And then I dumped it over in my Instapot, and I let it go for 30 minutes. I didn't really mean for it to go that long, but that's how long it went. And it is delicious. Oh my gosh, it is so good. And then I put the liquid, of course, I put a can of coconut cream uh, and and probably about four cups of uh, heavy whipping cream and some and some water. And then I made a slurry. Have you ever heard that word, slurry? That's what happens when you stir up a tablespoon of arrowroot in some cool, cool liquid, whether it's uh, heavy whipping cream, and you make a slurry, kind of like a roux, but a roux is more of a thick, is thickened with the heat. This is cold. If you put hot liquid in arrowroot, it's going to make it clump up. So you want it to, you want to whisk it, and it's liquid, so then you pour that in. Hey, Don, gosh, hadn't seen you in a while, and this is an amazing uh, salmon stew, and I used a canned salmon. I didn't even have fresh salmon. I don't know that I could tell the difference, but uh, I did take off the black skin, and I took the bones out, although I did eat the bones because they're healthy, and um, got some really great vitamins in there, and yeah, this is what I had. Okay, so... I want to end with this, all right, so hey Rita, hey Doreen, I want to end with this, so today I was just meditating about, I didn't have peace about a particular subject, there was, there was a, a situation going on in my family I didn't have peace about, and you know, when I don't have peace, what I notice is that it's because I'm focusing on something that is not healthy for me, okay? I'm focusing on the future. You know, worry is always in the future. You don't worry about what's happened right now. Like, I'm not worried about how this soup is going to turn out because, look, there it is. It's already turned out. I don't have to worry about it. But before I made it, I had some concerns about how is it going to turn out because I'd never made it before. <laughs> Hey, Doreen. Gosh, I've already had a shower and no makeup, but it's okay. All right, so um, so when you worry, it's always going into the future, okay, and, and thinking you're going to try to change the future, and you just can't do that. I want to hear about your trip, Doreen, as well. So uh, worry takes you into the future. So you have to stay in the present to have peace. So notice, here's what you notice. If you don't have peace is probably because you are focusing on something negative. And the reason I say that is Philippians 4 says, if you think on what is pure and holy and lovely and of good report, then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will rule your heart and your mind. Yes, I love it too. So, hey, Wendy and Karen. So, Notice, if you don't have peace, if you're fretting and worrying, it's because you are focusing on something that is not pure and holy and lovely and of good report. 
So I just want to encourage you in that tomorrow, if you're worried about something, just switch your focus to what's pure and lovely. Think of a pure thought, a lovely thought. Let's see. Um, what else? What e okay, whatever is pure and holy and lovely, just think on those things. And so this morning when I was doing that, I was thinking, okay, so what is pure? What is, what is something that's pure? And to me, something is pure is something that's unadulterated. It's just, it's just pure. And I think about God's love, and it is so pure. It is so pure. It is not conditional. And then what is holy, I think about something that is holy is something that is without blemish. Yeah, it, 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 again, his love is without blemish. His, his faithfulness is unblemished. And then uh, it doesn't have any guile in it. There's no measurement. He, he's not measuring us against anybody else. Uh, hey, Crystal. And then uh, when I think about what's lovely, I'm thinking about smiles and love and care and support. And uh, those are the things I want to think about. And I'll have peace. So measure yourself. If you don't have peace, it's because you're thinking about the wrong thing. So whoever sent up that love, I can't tell who it is, but I appreciate it. And I hope you have a good night. Yeah. Hey, Wendy, thank you. And I hope you enjoy some salmon stew.